Look, what do you think is well, going on over there? Uh, you know, it, it goes back to the low fare model that we had. They could not match our cost. Right. So basically what they started doing was adding on fees yep. so that they could get closer to matching our, our base fare. And, and that's not what we do. We don't separate uh, charges for bags, for change fees. Right. We've stopped overbooking. We're, what we're trying to do with our employees is give them uh, as, as many things as possible to be proud of to serve our customers, to take as many pain points out of the travel experience as possible. So you think it actually begins with not just the way you treat customers, but the way you treat employees? Oh, certainly. Right. And If you uh, treat them well, they'll treat us well. Yeah, we, we believe that um, all 55,000 employees are really family. Yeah. And what we ask them to do as a family is to treat all of our customers like their guests in our home. This of business is people. Yesterday, today, and forever. And as among employees, shareholders, and customers, we decided that our internal customers, our employees, came first. The synergy, in our opinion, is simple. Honor, respect, care for, protect, and reward your employees, regardless of title or position. And in turn, they will treat each other and their external customers in a warm, in a caring, and in a hospitable way. This causes external customers to return, thus bringing joy to shareholders. We believe that our job is not only to provide a far more reliable service at far lower fares, but also to provide a spiritual infusion, an infusion of fun, warmth, hospitality, and diligent servanthood for both employees and our passengers. The intangibles of spirit in our view, are more important than the tangibles of things. Why? First of all, it's a matter of morality and of ethics. But secondly, from a purely business standpoint, the tangibles can always be purchased. All airlines have airplanes. But the intangibles are far more difficult for competitors to replicate. And unless a company's paying p and compensation Psychic satisfaction is what employees and even external customers are primarily seeking. If anyone doubts the value of esprit de corps, I suggest to talk with the United States Marine Corps. Esprit gets things done well and fast. Communicate, 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 and communicate, but not in corporate speak or bureaucraties, which is not only boring, uh, but hardly understandable. Uh, set up employee services and employee care departments, which are constantly in contact with employees who have any professional or personal problems. Show that you value your employees as individuals, not just as workers. Through word and by deed, join in their every personal exaltation, such as the birth of a baby, and their every personal mishap and grief, such as the death of a relative. You always hear from us when anything important happens in your life. As a business becomes larger and more widespread geographically, establish culture committees. Establish culture committees in effect as missionaries to spread the word and keep the fire of culture burning and constantly honor and constantly celebrate employees who display golden rule behavior inside or outside the work environment because they're the role models for all of your people and how you want them to behave. Culture is admittedly difficult to define. I suppose uh, in that respect it's somewhat akin to the Supreme Court's uh, definition of pornography. Uh, you know, you know it when you see it, uh, but it's kind of hard to define. And I ran into that when uh, Diane von Furstenberg uh, wrote me some years ago and said that she had flown on Southwest Airlines and that she really didn't like our ambiance. And I wrote back to her and said, I didn't know what ambiance meant. I was just damn glad to hear that we had one. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs>
But even though it's uh, even though it's definitely definitionally elusive, uh, that does not diminish the uh, significance and the power of culture. And former Governor Earl Long of Louisiana uh, brought that home very forcibly to me. Uh, the doyen, one of the doyens of New Orleans society, uh, wanted some money to establish a museum uh, in New Orleans. And she called Governor Long and she said, Governor, you cannot have a world-class city unless you have a world-class museum. And he said, well, ma'am, I've been fighting this battle for you for the last day and a half with my staff. Said they wanted to spend the money on schools. I told them no. They wanted to spend the money on hospitals. I told them no. They wanted to spend the money on roads. I told them no. And he said, you know, when I finally prevail, he said when I told him, look guys, if you ain't got culture, you ain't got shit. <laughs> at Southwest Airlines, we're united by a purpose a purpose that is at the heart of everything we do. It's the simplest and purest expression of why we exist. Our purpose at Southwest Airlines is clear. We exist to connect people to what's important in their lives through friendly, reliable, and low-cost air travel. This purpose is why we get up every morning and why we matter to the millions of people who fly with us each year. And if we live this purpose every day, we'll achieve our vision to become the world's most loved, most flown, and most profitable airline. But it all starts with you.